Hi, welcome to Games Made Easy. My name is Lavinia and this is Peter. Before we get into how to play the Castles of Burgundy, I want to thank you for watching and supporting me. I have a small favour to ask. Right now, many of you watch my channel regularly but haven't subscribed yet. If you could subscribe and click the bell, it would make a huge difference and it will help me continue making videos of the games I love. Thank you. Now, let me teach you and give you tips on how to play the Castles of Burgundy, designed by Stefan Feld and published by Ravensburger. This is a classic I've been hearing about for some years, and now that I've played it, I understand why it's a, such a classic Euro game. It is well balanced, builds up, and keeps the tension until the end, and no game is ever the same. In the Castles of Burgundy, you play a duke managing an estate in 15th century France. Your goal is to lead your duchy to prosperity through strategic expansion and trade and make your duchy more successful than all the other duchies. At the end of the fifth round of the last phase, you add your money, workers, goods and any points from the yellow tiles you've played to the points you scored on your land throughout the game. The player with the most points wins the game. Start the game by picking a player board which represents your duchy. For your first couple of games, you use board number one. The number is right here. When you're familiar with the game, randomly deal one of the six double-sided maps to each player. All maps have the same size and the same shape. Your duchy has 37 hex spaces that are divided into regions of different colors. Your castles are in the dark green. Blue rivers are for ships, mines go in grey, light green pastures for livestock, towns in beige and monasteries in yellow. Give two dice, two player tokens and one marker to each player. Place the main board in the middle of the table. There's one side for two or three players and the other side is for four players. Today I'm setting up a three player game so I'll use this side. Separate all the tiles in five groups. These 44 double sided are three types. The dark greens are castles, the greys are mines, and the blues are ships. These 40 with the beige background are buildings. These 20 with the yellow background are monasteries. They are all unique. These 20 with the light green back are four types of livestock, sheep, pigs, deer, and cows. Finally, you also have these 40 tokens, which are like all the others, but with a black background. Randomly place the tiles on the main board on their respective color. Six blacks here, the beige, yellow, and light green tiles there. Place the blue, dark green, and gray here. Place one of your player markers on the starting shield and place your 100 and 200 marker near the starting shield. Each player rolls one die, the highest starts. Give one silver coin and one worker to that player. The first player also takes the white die. Then in clockwise order, give one extra worker to each player so the second player gets one silver and two workers, the third one silver and three workers, and in a full player game, the fourth gets one silver and four workers. Place the player tokens according to their initiative, all of them on the first space on the bridge in one pile, with the first player on top and others below, with the last player at the bottom. On the bottom right corner of the main board, place the bonus tiles. They come in six colors. Place the smaller one underneath like this and the bigger one on top. Place all the trade goods face down. There are six types of goods, one for each side of the dice. But apart from the color and number, they all play and score the same. Place five stacks of five goods face down here. These mark the five phases you play each game. Randomly give three square good tokens to each player. Place the goods on the player board here. Stack goods of the same color together. Place one castle in a dark green space on your duchy. For your first game, place it in the middle here. For more advanced games, you choose the side of the player board you want to play and on which dark green hex space you place your starting castle. Players should all agree on whether this decision is made simultaneously or in turn order. Now you're ready to start the first phase of the game. Each game is played over 25 rounds, five rounds for each phase. Start each phase by flipping the trade goods for that phase. Place the five of them on this track here. Now all players roll their dice simultaneously. The first player rolls three dice. Use the white one to place the trade good closest to the face stacks on one of the six depots. This is a four, so I place it here. There's five different actions you can take in your turn. The first action you can take is to pick a hex from the main board. 
You can pick a hex from a depot matching what you've rolled. So here, for instance, I've rolled a six and a two. So I can pick up any of the available tiles, but not the trade goods. I can take the market with the two and the castle with a six. And you place it on an unused key in your key spaces. It's at the bottom left of your player board. You never place a new hex from the main board directly into your duchy. If you don't have an empty slot in your key spaces, you must first create space. You can discard a tile from your board back to the box, but that's a bad idea. The best option is to play a tile into your duchy. And that's the second action you can take. Take a tile from the key spaces and place it on an unused hex space in your duchy that matches the die result and the tile color. You may only place the tile on a space directly adjacent to at least one previously placed tile. So the first time it's only around your castle. The color of the tile must always match the color of the hex space. The tile you place in a duchy is permanent. You can never move, remove or replace it. Also, depending on the color you place it on, different things happen. When you place a blue ship, two things happen. You may take all the goods from the depot of your choice and place them on your player board. Fill empty spaces and stack those you already have. If you don't have space or you have that color already, take what you can and leave the other goods in the depot. The blue ship also makes you gain initiative. Move your token forward one space on the bridge. If there's already someone there, place your token on top of theirs. For now, you'll play before them in the next turn. When you place a grey, nothing happens immediately. However, you earn one silver coin for each mine you have in your duchy at the start of each phase. When you place a dark green castle tile, you get to play again. Treat this as a virtual extra die. You can do any action that would normally require an extra die. When you place a light green tile, you can score points in a couple of ways. When you first place a specific type of livestock, you score for each animal on the tile. So here, four points. You also score more if you keep placing the same type of livestock in your pastures. When you score the same type of livestock in the same pasture, in addition to scoring the new one, you also score all the previous ones of that type as well. So here, four plus two plus three, nine points. Now I'll show you what happens when you place beige tiles in your town. There are eight types of beige buildings, each with their own bonus. As soon as you place a beige building in your duchy, you may immediately and only once use that building's bonus. You can place more than one of each type in your duchy. However, unless specified, you cannot place the same type of building more than once in the same region. When you place one of these three, you can take one specific tile from the main board into your key spaces. When you place a town hall, you immediately place one more tile from your key space into your duchy. When you place these two, you collect either two silver coins or four workers. With the watchtower, you immediately score four points on the victory point track. And finally, the warehouse lets you sell one type of goods you own. Note that you're never forced to apply the effect on the building you've just placed. It's just a shame not to. Now let me show you what happens when you place a yellow tile, one of the 26 monasteries. These are unique tiles. They come in two categories. 13 of them give you ongoing effects and abilities you can use during the game. The other 13 monasteries give you points at the end of the game. Try to collect some of those early in the game. Now, in addition to benefiting from the individual tile you've just placed, you also score additional points if you close a region and if you complete a color. As soon as you complete a region of any size, it is considered complete and you score twice. First, depending on its size, one to eight spaces, you score one to 36 points and immediately move on the victory point track. So here, a size three scores six points. In addition, depending on your current phase, your completed area gains 10 to two additional points. The empty phase space shows you your current phase and the additional points you score. So here in phase B, it's eight points. Another way to score points is if you are the first or second player to completely cover all the spaces of one color in your duchy. By placing the third mine here, you take the large bonus tile on this color and immediately score the corresponding points depending on the number of players. Five points in a two player game, six in a three player game, or seven in a four player game. So here, six points. This smaller bonus tile is if you are the second player to complete one color and you score two to four points depending on the number of players. The third and fourth players get no bonus. 
Now I'll explain the action you take to buy more workers. Using any die result, you can choose to take two workers from the supply onto your player board. You use these workers to change the result of any die by a plus or minus one. So for instance, I can use this three and one worker to make it into a two or a four. Note that it goes around. So you can use one worker to change a six into a five or a one. You can use as many workers as you want to change a die result. Another action is to use one die to sell trade goods. Your die result must match one of the stacks of goods you have face up on your player board. You must sell all of the goods in that stack in one action. Place all goods of that color face down on the sold space here. You collect one silver coin no matter how many tiles you've just sold. You also score two, three or four points per good sold depending on the number of players. So in a three player game selling these three, I'll score nine points. Note that if you pass the coat of arms while scoring, place the point chip on 100 first and 200 the second time. Finally, you can use the silver coin you started with and the one you've got from selling goods to buy tiles on the black market. Pay two silver coins to the supply and take any one tile from the black market and place it into an empty space in your keys. This doesn't count as one of your actions as you do not need to allocate an action die for this. However, you can perform this action only once per turn. Whatever your action, it's good practice to place your used die in this area. So it shows the players you have already played this turn. This helps keep track of the initiative order as it might change during the turn. When all players have played their two action dice, the new first player takes the white die and rolls its three dice. This goes on and on until there's no more trading goods on the game round space. At the end of that turn, it's also the end of the phase. A couple of things need to happen before you move on to the next phase. Distribute the next stack of trade goods. Take the stack of five goods from the current phase space and place them face up on the five square round spaces. Remove any tiles still on the main board and discard them. Do not remove any goods from the depots. Replenish the hexes with the tiles matching their color, including the black market. For the three player game, in this tile, place a castle in phase A, C and E and a gray mine in phase B and D. Finally, collect one silver coin for each mine in your duchy. You keep playing each phase the same way until the fifth round of the last phase. When the last player has played its last action at the end of phase E, it's the end of the game. All players count their points at the same time. Add one point for each silver on your player board. Add one point for each pair of workers on your player board. Add one point for each unsold trade good. Then score all your yellow monasteries marked with a red shield. These can add quite a lot of points at times. The player with the most points wins the game. In case of a tie, the one with the most unused hex spaces in their duchy wins the game. If there is still a tie, then the one farthest behind on the bridge is the winner. Now my tips to win a Castles of Burgundy are, it, it can be important to be the first at the start of the phase. So time when you place your blue tile, being the last to play it often gives you better initiative. However, if you wait too long, you could lose interesting goods. It's well worth buying livestock you need on the black market as filling pastures with the same type can give you a lot of points. Using castles or a lot of beige tiles can help you play a lot more than the two actions you have from your dice. Some yellow monasteries can jumpstart your engine early in the game. Try to get them early. Grab the monasteries that you can score at the end of the game. They can add a lot of points. The earlier you finish regions, the more round bonus points you get. Don't be afraid to buy workers if they can get you a great scoring tile or complete a colour first. And that's how you play Castles of Burgundy. I think it's a fantastic game. It's also not as hard to learn as it first appears and it will appeal to newcomers as well as seasoned players. I can't stop playing it at the moment. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, consider becoming a YouTube member, supporting me on Patreon or buying me a coffee. The links are in the video description. If there is a game you would like me to teach, let me know. Um, I'll definitely check it out. We will make more games easy soon. Bye now.